Welcome back to Level Headed Mind. I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner and mental health coach, and I specialize in integrative mental health practices. And today we're unpacking one of the most misunderstood genes when it comes to brain health and diet the APOE gene. And if you've ever felt worse on the ketogenic diet or you're trying to biohack your brain, you need to hear this. So stay tuned. Your APOE gene determines which version of the apolipoprotein E your body makes, E2, E3, or E4. And this protein is a master multitasker because it regulates cholesterol transport, triglyceride clearance, inflammation, and even brain detox through the amyloid beta clearance. And so let's break it down. E2 is protective for heart and brain health due to its potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory capacity. It may also protect against cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. E3 is the most common and considered neutral. So an E3, E3 variant is neutral. But if you have an E4, even one copy of it, this is linked to higher LDL, oxidative stress, glucose dysregulation, and a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. Even someone with APOE E3, E4 may see significant changes in how they respond to certain diets and lifestyle choices. If you have the E4, E4 variant, then you have a very high likelihood of having these issues along with an even greater likelihood of Alzheimer's disease. And it's recommended that if you do have that variant, that you should seek professional guidance and consider genetic counseling to identify and understand your unique needs and risk factors. Now, keto diets are high in saturated fat, but here's the problem. APOE4 carriers absorb fat more efficiently, and that might sound like a good thing, but it actually slows down how your liver clears cholesterol. You see, it tells the liver to shut down some of the doors that it normally uses called LDL receptors to pull cholesterol out of the bloodstream. And with APOE4, those tiny doors start closing from oversaturation, so cholesterol sticks around longer. And this leads to higher LDL levels and more inflammation, especially in the brain. So the ketogenic diet plus the APOE4 gene can sometimes lead to brain fog, anxiety, increased inflammation, or long-term cardiovascular risks. And remember, APOE4 is very sensitive to environment factors like diet, stress, toxins, mold, and even infections. So epigenetic factors do matter. And if you missed my video on epigenetics, I advise that you go ahead and check it out. Now, when you look at the APOE in contact with other genes that affect fat metabolism, your specific risks become more clear. So, for example, the FADS1 gene is your fatty acid desaturase gene. And if it's impaired, you may struggle to convert plant-based omega-3s like your ALAs into DHA, which is your brain's preferred fat source. So even if you're eating healthy fats, you may not be getting what your brain actually needs. Another gene, the PPARA gene, helps your mitochondria switch between burning carbs and fat. And it's a key player in metabolic flexibility. And if this gene is sluggish, you may feel like the keto crash or hypoglycemia, even when your fat intake is high. So if you carry the APOE4, the FADS1 slow converter, and a low functioning PPARA, then a traditional high fat keto diet plan can actually do you more harm than good. Because if you're not converting fats well, especially those omega-3s, or you're struggling to burn fat efficiently for fuel, your brain will definitely feel it. And you might experience symptoms like brain fog, low energy, poor focus, anxiety, and even low mood or irritability. And that's because DHEA is a critical building block for brain cells, neurotransmitters, and anti-inflammatory pathways. So when lipid metabolism is compromised, especially in people with genes like the FADS1, the PPARA, and your APOE4, mental health often suffers first. And so that takes us into our next part, talking about brain health. You see, brain aging and memory aren't just about the APOE gene. Several genes work together to shape our brain's resilience. 
And in previous videos, we've talked about other genes like COMT, MTHFR, and BDNF, and how they impact mood, stress, and cognition. If you missed those videos, I advise you go check them out. But when you add APOE in the mix, especially the E4 variant, it amplifies the impact that these genes will have on your brain. And so let's break that down. COMPT affects how quickly your brain breaks down stress chemicals like dopamine and norepinephrine. And if you're a slow COMPT metabolizer and you also carry APOE4, you may experience more anxiety, irritability, or mental fatigue, especially under stress or during hormone shifts. If you also have MTHFR, particularly the 677 and 1298 variants, this affects methylation, your body's ability to detox, repair DNA, and make neurotransmitters. And when methylation is impaired, and you layer that with the APOE4, there's a tendency to increase inflammation and oxidative stress. And it's this perfect storm for things like brain fog, low energy, and mood swings. If we look at BDNF, this is the brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is the fertilizer for your brain and it helps to grow and repair neurons. So if you have low BDNF combined with the APOE4, you can impair your neuroplasticity and memory formation, making it harder to bounce back from stress or cognitive strain. And there are other genes that influence brain aging too, like your TOMM40 gene, which is linked closely to APOE and impacts your mitochondrial health or your IL-6R gene, which is tied directly to inflammation in the brain. Then you have your ENOS and MNSOD genes, which are involved in blood flow and antioxidant defense. And then there are important genes that are critical for detoxification and even other methylation genes, like your NQ01 and MTR genes. So if you're someone who's dealing with brain fog, early memory issues, or mood imbalances, it's not just one gene to blame. It's the interaction between these genes and how your environment either turns them on or off that determines your brain's resilience. But it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, genes like your APOE, COMT, MTHFR, and BDNF can increase your risk, but they also give you a roadmap. And it's also important to understand that APOE4 isn't all negative. In fact, it's the ancestral version of the gene that's likely offering survival advantages for early humans. It supports fat absorption, vitamin D synthesis, and may have even helped protect against infections in environments with limited food supply or high pathogen load. But the issue today is that our modern lifestyle no longer supports or matches what that gene was designed for. So if you carry the APOE4, the goal isn't to fear it, it's to understand it and to support your body accordingly. And the good news is, is that there are real evidence-based strategies that can help you reduce inflammation, support brain function, and age well, no matter your genetics. So how do you work with your APOE gene instead of against it? Well, whether you have E3, E4, or E4, E4 carrier, or even if you're just curious about your brain optimization, these strategies can help you. And we first start with choosing the right fats. Focus on the monosaturated fats like olive oil, avocado oil, and nuts, and avoid high amounts of saturated fats from sources like butter, cheese, and coconut oil, especially if you carry the APOE4. Then you wanna prioritize your DHA. Your brain thrives on omega-3s, especially DHA, from wild-caught fatty fish like salmon, sardines, and even mackerel. And if you have the FODS-S1 variant, your body may struggle to convert plant-based omega-3s like ALA from flaxseed or chia seeds into DHA. And in that case, you could consider getting your DHA directly from fatty fish or algae-based supplements, which provide the brain-ready form of DHA that your body actually needs. Another thing you wanna do is eat an anti-inflammatory, low glycemic diet. This would include things like colorful vegetables, polyphenol-rich berries, and slow-burning carbs to help keep inflammation down and help keep your blood sugar stable, which is key for protecting your brain health and your brain's vasculature and reducing oxidative stress, which is the next thing we wanna do. We wanna reduce stress and move your body. So daily movement, especially cardio and strength training, can actually help with neuroplasticity and circulation. And stress reduction is critical, particularly for those with the COMPT or BDNF variants who are more sensitive to adrenaline and cortisol. Another thing you can do is sweat it out. 
And so regular sauna use like four to seven times per week has been shown to reduce Alzheimer's and dementia risk by over 60%. It supports detoxification, circulation, and even heat shock proteins that can help protect brain cells. And another tip is to get outside. You see, sunlight supports vitamin D production, which is essential for gene expression, mood, and immune health, especially in those with APOE4 carriers who are more susceptible to inflammation and infections. You see, the great news is that most of these changes are simple, sustainable, and entirely within your control. But figuring out which ones will actually make the biggest difference for you, well, that's where genetic testing becomes a game changer. Because without understanding your genetic blueprint, you could be following health advice that works great for someone else, but not for your body or your brain. And here's the thing, two people can eat the same diet, take the same supplements, and follow the same routines and have totally different results. And that's because your genes shape how your body processes food, responds to stress, clears toxins, and even makes neurotransmitters. And so when it comes to genes like APOE, FODS-S1, MTHFR, and COMPT, a one-size-fits-all approach, even something trendy like that ketogenic diet, might actually work against you. And that's why I use genetic testing, because it helps me map out exactly what's happening beneath the surface so we can create a plan that actually works for you. So whether you're dealing with anxiety, burnout, memory lapses, or just wanna perform at your highest level, this kind of insight gives us the power to work smarter, not harder, on your mental wellness. And if that's something you're interested in, then I advise you check the links in the description for the genetic testing and services that I provide. And if this video helped you understand your brain better, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and share it with someone who's questioning whether the keto diet is really helping their mood or focus. And coming up next, we'll be talking about genes that influence exercise and performance, like the ACTN3 gene, and how they can help you decide whether you're built for endurance or strength training. And that video might just change the way you work out. So until then, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.